Welcome back to What Are Teen Noobs for General Disturbance. This is a T95, it's a tier 9 American non turreted tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Himmelsdorf, and this one is under the command of Andromeda. Now, if you've been following Sophie Line's channel, she's, she's been doing a series of videos about the T95 and the T28 and how they got developed. And I'll put a link to those below the video so you can actually see those replays, those videos, if you want to. I think they're very informative. She actually talks to Rob Kogan, uh, the curator of the uh, cavalry um, collection, the National Cavalry Collection in the United States. And it's a lot of paperwork he has about the Honeycutt papers, which uh, show how the T95 was developed. Well, he's got the 155mm gun, which does 750 alpha, and, well, somebody spotted him. Six sets went off. Ah, oh, an LT-432 down the other end of the road, and he just tracked him. Now, it's quite a long reload time, because it is a big gun, 15 seconds to reload. But it will do 750 alpha if it can penetrate the target. Now, the... Doom Turtle, as it's lovingly known, is quite an efficient tank destroyer. Oh, two targets to hit there. You hit the T-55A for 806, which is a high roll. Now that T-55 now knows he's got a couple of shots. And the GW just hit us, and we know he's in the railway yard, because that's the direction it came from. So he's probably in grid square K1. And there's the M53 and M55, so we know both of them are in that yard. And the LT432 just hit us in the tracks, and there's four sets of tracks. Now, what the uh, the videos actually explained was that the T28 and the T95 is basically the same tank, but an extra set of tracks has been fitted to the sides of the vehicle. And that's why there's lots of similarities between the model of the T28 and the T95 when you look at the drawings. Now there's a Batchat 12 ton out in the railway yard, but we're ignoring him and the charioteer that's out there as well. And we're just heading straight south. And well, there's some enemy just around the corner, and now we're going to deal with those. LT432 takes a round right up his posterior for 784 hit points. He's now on just 82. He lost five with that explosion and we're backing up against the rubble to stop him getting behind us and I think that 432 well he's trying to run away T55A is now firing into our tracks didn't get a shot on him but now we can and that's another big hit low roll for 708 he's tracked us again but we're reloading okay we burned our repair kit and we had a fire in our rear Oh, we're being hit up the rear by the enemy light tanks. They've got behind us, and there's no protection from the guys behind, but the T-55A goes down. Okay, so Batchat is next. Not loaded yet, but the Link 6x6 is keeping that Batchat from coming into the main square. And he has to come out. Oh, he didn't auto-aim onto the target there. And as a consequence, when he popped his nose back out again, he wasn't ready. Okay, there's uh, one tank up on the enemy at the moment. Tries to auto aim on the back chat while he's too far away, and unfortunately that didn't work because he was going full speed. Now we do know there's two RT in the railway yard. Whether or not they're still there, I don't know, but oh, well, there's one of them. Say goodnight. Yep, he's gone. That's two kills now. Just need to find the M53, M55, and there he is. Right down the other end, just as I said, he would be in... Well, he's moving out of the railway yard. Now he's running as well he should. The enemy's capping, but we've got guys up there, so there's a ding-dong battle going on at that end of the map. And, well, the enemy's starting to lose players up that end as well. We're two tanks up on the enemy now. There's an ISU-152 just around the corner. And potentially that M53, M55, and the ISU's just been killed. The Baraska's just found the RT. They're both losing hit points. I think the Barask 
is in reload. That's probably why he didn't actually get to kill the RT, but we've auto aimed on, and there goes the RT. That's a Pascucci's medal. That means there's only one enemy left. It's an IS-3-2, and he's right up the other end of the map. So I don't think we're going to be driving up there anytime soon. Okay, we're going to sit inside the cap area. And I think that's it. We'll just sit here for the rest of the game. <laughs> We've got two in the cap. The T-54E1's decided to join us. The IS-32, well, he's sitting in that corner waiting for everybody to come and get him. And, in fact, a Scorpion G managed to finish him off. So, uh, not a bad game there for Andromeda. Bit of fun. He didn't have any really backup on that uh, street, so that's why he lost so many hit points to the enemy lights. But he survived the battle, considering how many hit points he lost. That's, that is pretty surprising. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Well, it's the second class tank for Andromeda in the T95. He managed to get a shell proof for blocking more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He got a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, a duelist for taking out two tanks who damaged him, and a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He also picked up a hand of gov because he survived the battle having received damage from four different enemy tanks. And, well, yes, quite a lot of damage at that. Pascucci's medal for killing two enemy RT, Spartan medal for surviving the battle, having received a ricochet or non-penetrating shot from an enemy team player when less than 10% of his hit points left, and he got the steel wall for blocking the most damage in that game overall, at least 11 hits. Well, he received quite a few hits. Let's have a look at the win eight, 3,440. Let's have a look at the team score then. Didn't get the highest damage in the game. Note that actually went to the Lynx with 2,939 hit points. Uh, showing here, actually, he's got the same number. But, uh, of course, he didn't get the high caliber, did he? So, very odd that they both got the same amount of damage, which is the, the same height. But the, the Lynx um, didn't get the high caliber either. So, maybe it was the fact that they both got the same score that um, Wargaming just wouldn't allow them to actually have the, the high caliber either of them. Um, very odd that. Never seen that happen before where both have got the same exact score. Uh, when it came to kills though, he was beaten by the Scorpion G, got four kills, he got three, and the IS-3-2 managed to get three kills as well. And when it came to base XP, well he got the top in that one, 1045 base, 1012 to the Link 6x6 and 944 to the IS-3A. He fired only nine rounds in the game, got seven direct hits and six penetration, damage of 2,939 hit points, all of it at close range. But the only two shots that he missed were the ones he was firing at the patch at 12 ton as he was moving away at speed. And, well, that's understandable under the circumstances. He received 18 hits from the enemy during that game, only six of which penetrated, 10 non-penetrations, and two hits by way of splash damage, both from the RT. 2,280 hit points of damage blocked by armour. He spotted one enemy vehicle, damaged four of the enemy, killed three, and did 1,383 hit points of damage assist, I think that's spotting assist actually, and 22 capture points in the cap. On a premium county and 49,791 credits. And after repair and ammunition resupply, standard ammo used throughout, 18,594 credits left over. Profit. 27 bonds for the game and 1,567 XP altogether. No multipliers. So, uh, yes, two, three top medals in that game, which is not bad at all. In fact, uh, the only disappointment, I suppose, really was the fact that he didn't have any teammates backing him up when he went down that road. And, of course, the light tanks, they just got behind him and then started perforating his rear. And they managed to get a fire because they set fire to the... Uh, they fired into the fuel tanks, those big, obvious fuel tanks on the rear. And so, well, if you're in a T-95 or a T-28, the best thing to do is always have somebody behind you backing you up because if you go uh, waltzing off into the enemy uh, using your heavy front armor to block their shots and somebody then gets behind you then they are going to perforate your <laughs> rear unless you've got somebody to back you up and take care of them so uh, uh, yeah it's good that he managed to survive the battle but he only just survived he didn't have many hit points left at the end of that game 
If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel, please. And thanks for watching.